Hello everyone, Medical Level Up here and I am back again with another video. This is going to be the third part to acid and base disturbances and today we are going to be talking about respiratory acidosis. Let's get right into it. So as usual we are going to start up with an example. You have a patient whose pH is 7.21, his PCO2 is 48 and his bicarb is 27. Now we need to look at the pH and the PCO2 in which direction they are moving. If they are moving in a unidirectional movement it was a metabolic disorder. But this time you can see that the pH is going down which is 7.21 and the PCO2 is going up. This is a bidirectional change which means that they are moving in opposite directions. So whenever they are moving in opposite directions it is a respiratory disorder. Now that you have decided that it is a respiratory disorder you need to look at the pH again. If the pH is going to be less than 7.35 it is acidosis and if it is more than 7.45 it is alkalosis. In this example the pH is 7.21 so this is acidosis. Put these two things together and you have respiratory acidosis. Let's talk about the differentials of respiratory acidosis. You need to think about this for a while. PCO2 is the acid over here. Anything that is going to cause hypoventilation is going to cause an additional amount of PCO2 that is going to accumulate inside the body. So let's think of conditions that is going to cause hypoventilation and the excessive amount of buildup of PCO2 in the body. So you have chest trauma, head trauma, lung trauma and even abdominal trauma that can result in hypoventilation. You have excessive sedation that can result in hypoventilation. You have pneumonia or any other lung disease as well. In patients who are severely obese there is usually hypoventilation and that is called Pickwickian syndrome. In patients who have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease there is usually a lot of dead space which is going to cause respiratory acidosis. Now respiratory acidosis can be a little bit tricky in the fact that it has an acute component and a chronic component. Uh, how do you tell the difference between the two? Well here's the thing, after you are done looking at the pH and the PCO2 the next thing you look at is the bicarb. If the bicarb is normal it means it is an acute respiratory disorder, normal or near normal ok. And if the bicarb is deranged it means that this is a chronic respiratory disorder. In acute respiratory conditions the acidosis is not as quickly and as drastically compensated by the renal system. So the coefficient for that in the equation was going to be 0.1. On the other hand in chronic respiratory disorders the coefficient is increased to 0.4. So there is going to be a little bit higher amount of compensation by the renal system. Here we are going to be taking only chronic respiratory disorders and we are going to be discussing them with an example. Let us take the same example. Say a patient has a pH of 7.21 a PCO2 of 48 and a bicarb of 27. You need to understand whether or not there is compensation going on by the renal system in this. So we are going to use the same equation which is delta bicarb is equal to PCO2 multiplied by 0.4 ok. So the coefficient over here is 0.4. Let us throw the normal values into this and throw the value of the patient's PCO2 into this equation. So it becomes something like this 0.4 multiplied by 40 minus 48. So you do the math it comes to around minus 3. So you shift the minus 3 to the other side of the equation and this is going to be added to the bicarbonate. Now if you make sense of this it needs to be added to the bicarbonate because there is acidosis going on and that acidosis needs to be balanced out by the kidneys by increasing the amount of bicarb which is a base. So 24 plus 3 is equal to 27 which was the exact case in our example the bicarb of the patient was already 27. So we know in this condition that there is adequate renal compensation going on. You are going to find yourself in two different sets of conditions when you are working with respiratory acidosis. On one extreme is that there is too much bicarb in the blood that is being compensated by the kidney and on the other end there is not enough bicarb at all. When you see this and there is not enough bicarb you know that the kidney is not compensating adequately and this is called an incomplete renal response. On the other hand when you see that the bicarb is way too elevated even more so than the expected then you know that there is a coexistent metabolic alkalosis going on with the respiratory acidosis. That is how you check for compensation. Let us summarize this video real quickly. So the first thing you do is you look at the pH and then you look at the PCO2. If it is a bidirectional movement meaning that they are going in opposite directions it is a respiratory disorder. Next thing you look at the pH, if it is below 7.35 it is acidosis, if it is more than 7.45 it is alkalosis. The next thing is that you look at bicarb, 
if the bicarb is normal or near normal, it is an acute respiratory acidosis. If it is deranged, it is a chronic respiratory acidosis. We know the differentials for respiratory acidosis, which we discussed in the video before. After that, you look for compensation. The calculations for that was delta bicarb is equal to 0.4 multiplied by delta PCO2. We did an example in the video before. That's all there is to respiratory acidosis. I hope you understood this. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them down in the comment section below, and I will try to answer everyone. That's all, and have a good day.